welcome to the world of probiotic foods. This is Cultured Food Life with your host, Donna Schwenk. Welcome to the show, everybody. Today, we're going to talk about six foods that can really change your life. Throughout the centuries, um, people have occasionally heard strange tales of an unusual beverage, and they believed it had magical properties. And the people in the Caucasus Mountains have been drinking this magical beverage called kefir for over a thousand years. And they are known for living to well over a hundred years old. And not many people outside of these mountainous regions knew about kefir. It was mostly forgotten about for hundreds of years until news spread of its use for a treatment of tuberculosis. The Russian doctors believe that kefir was so beneficial for health, and the first scientific studies on kefir were published at the end of the 19th century. Unfortunately, the kefir grains required to make milk kefir were extremely difficult to obtain. And in 1908, a committee of Russian doctors determined to get some of these kefir grains came up with a plan. They contacted Nikolo Blandov, who ran the Moscow Dairy, and had connections with these people in the mountainous regions. And they had made some of their cheese products there, and he knew them. So they sent a beautiful employee named Ervian Skarhovkov to the court of the local prince to see if he could entice her to give him some grains. The prince was quite taken with her, but had no intentions of giving her kefir grains. So instead, he kidnapped her for himself. But the Tsar Nicholas II was not happy when he discovered the fact that the prince had done by taking this beautiful woman and ruled that the prince was to give Erna 10 pounds of kefir grains to repay her for the insults that she had endured. And the precious kefir grains were taken back to the Moscow dairy and the first bottles of kefir were manufactured commercially or offered for sale in Moscow in September 1908. By the 1930s, kefir was made and sold. I mean, it was, it was everywhere on a much larger scale. And in 1973, the Minister of the Food Industry of the Soviet Union sent a letter to 85-year-old Erna thanking her for bringing kefir to the Russian people. It had helped them so tremendously, and it was, it was so well used in that area um, that he, he, they, people were so grateful that she had brought these grains to their country. I have my own stories of kefir, and I think it's magical too. And I've shared it many times on this show and on my website and in my story video on YouTube. And it started 16 years ago, and to this day, I still make and drink kefir, and I usually do it every single morning. Um, it's I've grown into making so many other cultured foods, but kefir is my favorite because kefir was the one that changed me so dramatically. And it has the most probiotics of any of the cultured foods. And it can change you. And I've seen it change so many thousands of people in so many miraculous ways. And I want to show you five other foods besides kefir, which is a total of six, that you can eat all the time and that it can really change you from the inside out. You'll love these, these foods. You'll love these probiotic foods I share with you. And I can show you how to make them really easily in a part of your life. A lot of people think this is hard. It's really not, guys. It's just new to you, so it feels intimidating. These are some of the safest foods on the planet to make and eat because the good bacteria dominates and keeps out the pathogens. And it's, it's so um, exciting to me that these foods can be made again and again. Like once you have a culture, that culture can last you your lifetime and can be passed down to your children. I still have my original cultures that I got 16 years ago and they're, they're going strong. And I've used them for, you know, 16 years. And um, it's such a wonderful thing to see them reproduce themselves. And I can, you know, keep making these foods that I love. And I don't have to constantly go out and buy th uh, cultures because they're sustainable. And uh, they, they don't cost a lot of money to make. It's just food, guys. And it's an exciting way to have foods that work like medicine in your fridge, but foods that are enjoyable, too. 
And um, I love these foods and I love to teach people how to make them. And I love to watch their health get better because that's an exciting thing for me. So maybe today you don't feel well or you feel discouraged with a health issue. But if you just change one thing and incorporate just like one of these foods into your life, it can change everything. And that's what I did. I changed one thing and I felt better. And then I began to change more things. And then I began to make more cultured foods and do other things in my life and change other parts of my diet. But at first, it started with just changing one thing. And these foods aren't like any other foods that you'll eat. They are living foods full of special helpers called microbes. And this means you're getting a healthy supply of friendly bacteria or probiotics to maintain balance in your intestinal tract. They digest your food, they create vitamins, reduce inflammation, lower cholesterol, help your kidneys, your heart, and just your um, asthma, arthritis. You guys, they do so many wonderful things. And I actually have written so many articles because now research has caught up with it. I've known for years, and they've given me the evidence to back up and to and to share with you because I, I just got, I get flooded with letters from people of how these foods are helping people. And it's so miraculous to me. And now the research is, is helping to explain why this is happening to somebody. And it's exciting to me um, to be able to share with you all the new news and all the research that is behind these powerful foods that really help heal our bodies. Uh, I saw an interesting story about plants the other day, and it explained how a plant protects itself and those around it. Um, when, a, when two spotted mite attacked a lima bean plant, the plant sends out a special chemical signal. And when the distress signal reaches all the other surrounding lima bean plants, they too begin to send out this chemical signal, even though those plants are not being attacked by the two spotted mite. And the signal carries several messages to different animal species. And so the spider mites that are not on the plant being attacked are repelled from the area. Um, and on the other hand, any, any kind of a mite that drifts into that area will stay to feed on those two spotted spider mites and kill them. And as a result, the lima bean defends itself by sending out these messages to three different species to get it to help it and to, to save it from those two spotted mites. Two spotted mite. And it's, uh, it's interesting that I never knew the plants did that, but they do. And they have their own defense me mechanisms. Our microbes that live in us and on us do the same thing. They communicate with each other and the cells around us. And when they have lots of strains and species of strong, healthy, good bacteria, they have a strong army that fights on, on our behalf when they're inside of us. It will alert our T-cells that there's a foreign invader that they need to kill and destroy. It will consume cholesterol as a food source and will help lower your cholesterol naturally. It will fight away pathogens and remove them from the body with the strong, powerful ability to detoxify you. And most of all, it will make you feel good. It uh, helps you support the neo network in your gut called the second brain that makes those feeling good chemicals in the gut that travel through the vagus nerve to make you feel so good. It's an easy thing to do to increase the, your, the different uh, microbiome and, and to, to change it with added species. And I know this sounds crazy like science fiction, but it's really, it's very, very much who we, it's very much who we are. It's, it's such an exciting thing to know that these microbes were here to help us. They're here to keep us healthy. They're even here to help us breathe. And when you feel good, uh, you deserve to feel good. And your body wants to feel good. And it knows how to keep you well. Um, but it can't do everything if you're not assisting it. And if I can teach you to make and eat a new kind of food that will help these microbes to grow and be strong and you consume them, um, it's exciting for me because I know it will change your life. It's so, it's such a wonderful thing. I had a lady send me an email the other day and she's on my live's touch page and she was telling me how she's felt so bad for so many years. And uh, she's an older woman and she said now she's dancing uh, in her kitchen and, and she never felt good enough to dance in years and years. And now she's, with the consumption of these foods, she's got her life back and this feels better than she has in in a long time. And it's exciting to me 
Um, if you want to see some of these wonderful stories, go to my Lives Touch page at culturefoodlife.com and, and click on the little link that says Live Touch and read these miraculous stories of these people that have been helped by these foods. And I get so many more that I, that I don't share because people, I ask if I can share them. Some people want to keep it private. But it's, um, it's a wonderful thing to, to live in my world and to see people getting better, not with m- so much my assistance, but with the assistance of microbes and the power of cultured foods. So if you're not familiar with cultured foods, they are probiotic foods. They have more probiotics in one spoonful than an entire supplement bottle that you can buy at the store. And these are six of my favorite foods, and you can have them whatever way you like. But let's start with the first one. The first one is kefir. Yogurt is good too, but kefir is much, much, much more powerful. It's loaded with 50 plus strains of probiotics, and most yogurts don't have but maybe three to seven in them and of good bacteria and kefir has 50 plus and homemade is much stronger than store-bought kefir and um, it just takes a jar and milk and it can be non-dairy it can be regular milk it can be goat's milk it can be coconut milk it can be nut milk and you just place it in a jar put a culture in there put a lid on the jar let it sit on your counter for 24 hours the next day you have kefir you can take it anywhere you want to go. It's super easy. It's super fast. It's way easier to make than yogurt. And you will love it. And it has the power to heal your gut in a powerful way. Like in a way like you never felt that good before. That's what happened to me. Because it not only healed my gut, it made, I didn't even know my gut was messed up. I don't even know if it was messed up. I just know I was messed up. I had diabetes. I had high blood pressure. I was depressed. I didn't feel good. I had no energy. And kefir had the power to change all that for me. And it was an amazing thing. And when it did that, I took notice. And I didn't even know why it did it. But fast forward 16 years later, and I still drink it every day. And it makes all the difference in the world. The next is cultured vegetables. They're just vegetables that you chop up and place in a jar. You add a culture, some water and salt. And then you put a lid on it. And you let it ferment anywhere from three to six days, depending on the vegetables that you use. And after that, you have one of the most powerful probiotics um, lactobacillus planetarum. And it's so powerful. It's so wonderful. I love this bacteria. It works on seasonal allergies. It works on food allergies. It works on IBS, stomach distress, candida. It will build a wall in your gut that repairs it and keeps out pathogens that seek to do you harm. There is nothing like this. I love this, ve- this special bacteria in cultured vegetables. And the cool thing is you can buy these vegetables at the store and the in the refrigerator section at most health food stores, but I really encourage you to make your own because guys, if you can chop vegetables, you can make cultured vegetables because you're just chopping vegetables, you're putting them in a jar, you're adding a culture and some salt and you're letting them ferment on your counter. That's all you're doing. And the microbes do the work and you get the benefits. It's super cool. And I got a million recipes. If you're scared, come to my class. I have a good class coming up. Uh, it may 5th. It'll, it's, It's going to be a fantastic class. We're going to teach you all about kefir. We're going to show you how even your kefir way can make cultured vegetables. It's fantastic. There's lots of ways to do it, and I've got lots of help for you. The next food, or this is actually a drink, is kombucha. And if you haven't tried it, then you're missing out because it's everywhere. It's a fermented tea that it's just, guys, it's so fantastic. It's probiotic. It's wonderful for so many things, and I have it every day. Um, it can help balance your hormones and help you with bowel problems. It can help you even when you have to take an antibiotic because the special probiotic in kombucha cannot be killed by antibiotic. It's bubbly. Um, it tastes, it's, it's a great way to get off pop and it's got naturally occurring carbonation that's similar to pop, but it's good for you because it's naturally occurring and not forced, um, carbonation. And it's all made through the process of fermentation. It assists the liver in detoxification, and I love it so much. I can't tell you how many benefits I've received from kombucha, and you'll see that all over my site. It's powerful. And everybody, in my personal opinion, I think everybody needs a crock of kombucha tea for many in their house. It's simply tea and sugar, and the good bacteria consumes the sugar out of the tea and makes it into probiotics for you. And it uh, ferments it, keeps it safe, and it's fantastic, and I can't say enough about it. You should go try a bottle, see how you like it, and see if it helps you. It's, there's nothing like it. The next two foods that are fermented that can help you greatly are legumes and grains. 
and certain legumes and grains are fermented and made into probiotic foods. Okay, now the first one is natto, which is a soybean that is fermented. And I'm not particularly fond of soy, but I like fermented soy. And natto is extremely good for you. It's high in protein and high in vitamin K2. And um, they use it. It's fantastic for preventing strokes and helping with your um, blood pressure, with your cardiovascular system. It is fantastic for the body. Tempa, another probiotic fruit, that originated in Indonesia. And it's made from grains and legumes, and it's so good for you. And so is miso. Miso is a fermented bean paste. And it can be made from other things besides soybeans. It can be made from chickpeas, rice, barley. And it comes in several different kinds. And I have lots of miso recipes on my website because I love it. I, I have some new ones in my book. I put miso in all kinds of things. It's so wonderful for you. And there's so many ways to use it. And, you know, it's so easy to make. It's, uh, you know, you can just, a, a little thing of miso paste in your fridge can last my gosh, it can last a very long time, over a year or so. And it's from because it's fermented and it preserves it. And it's so wonderful. You can, you know, heat up a little bit of water and warm water, add a little miso paste to it and some veggies real, and you have soup. It's fantastic for you. But I also have a lot of things I do. I make dips with it. In my new book, Cultured Food in a Jar, I have some miso dips that is like two or three ingredients that you would just absolutely love. That's terrific for you. And all those foods um, are high in vitamin K2, which you don't get very much. Your bacteria has to assist you in getting vitamin K2. And those are powerful foods that can help you, um, help keep your arteries strong and healthy and prevent strokes. And it's it's a wonderful addition to your diet, whether you make it or whether you buy it. It's good for you. Now, grains and seeds can be sprouted and then fermented to provide beneficial bacteria for your breads. And this is so important. Sourdough, rye, or sourdough, or sprouted wheat breads are so much better for you than ordinary breads and may prevent and help allergic or gluten reactions. And that was the case within my own daughter. My daughter was how I discovered um, these sprouted. When you sprout a bread, when you make sprouted bread, you're sprouting the grain. You're putting the grain in water and you sprout it till it gets a little tail. And you dehydrate it and you grind it into flour or you can buy it already sprouted. You can buy it in stores already sprouted. But I highly, highly recommend you make your grains, your cakes, your pastries, your muffins, your breads from either sprouted grains or you use a sourdough culture to make your breads, which I love. And I have a new recipe on my site for a fantastic recipe for sourdough bread. When you do this, when you use a culture that has good bacteria in it, it transforms the glutens in the breads. It gets rid of the enzyme inhibitors and the phylates that really are hard on your gut and transforms the bread. And in my opinion, we should only be eating sprouted or sourdough breads made with cultures because otherwise you're not getting the nutrients from the bread. It's wreaking havoc on your gut because your gut can't digest it. It's it's so hard on your body. But when you make it um, with sprouted or with sourdough cultures, it transforms the bread. It's a whole different food. And you get all kinds of minerals, including the iron and the zinc, manganese, and calcium and all of these things that are locked up in the grain unless they're sprouted or you use a culture to make the bread. Um, It helps it become digestible and many who are allergic to gluten, including my daughter many years ago, could handle this bread fine, whereas regular bread just made her a wreck. It was horrible for her. But when we made these breads this way, it was fantastic. And um, you can find all this information on my website at culturedfoodlife.com. And I just did a podcast about the only bread I eat. I encourage you to listen to that podcast. It'll give you a lot more information than I'm giving you on this podcast about why it's so important um, that you look at the types of bread and why it's causing such a gluten up, um, rising up of people not wanting gluten anymore. Because it's true, there's a real problem with the way we make our breads now and with the way the grains are sprayed and And uh, it's, once you understand that and have the wisdom, it's not, you know, we tend to demonize foods. And, you know, I've lived long enough to see so many foods get demonized. It's ridiculous because one week fat is bad and the next week carbs are bad. And then after that, it's eggs and it's coconut oil. And it's, you know, and then I've watched them all get redeemed, every one of them. And it's interesting to be honest, surprised we can find anything to eat anymore. But it's interesting. Often it's not the food, it's what we've done to the food. 
And when you are, start to understand that, it changes everything for you. Now, the last one I want to tell you about is probiotic sodas. Um, we have a lot of probiotic sodas on our site and in my books. Water kefir, ginger sodas, ginger beers. Um, they're all fermented, kombuchas, all these different types of um, drinks that are fermented are fantastic. And we really need these in our lives because soda, regular soda pop is just wreaking havoc on our children and our families because it's so harmful to our bodies. But these probiotic sodas, um, they've been made for thousands of years because that's how they, because their water wasn't always good back then, but when they fermented it, it would change um, the the chemical structure of the the water so that it would put probiotics in it and they would dominate and keep out the harmful pathogens. And so today, as we drink them, we're getting a fraction of the sugar because most of the sugar is eaten by the bacteria, but you're getting a bubbly carbonated, carbonated drink that people and kids and adults love. And I, I've got, I made two this morning and they're sitting on my counter. They're super easy to make. Um, I have videos on how to make them. I have recipes and guys it's so much fun you're just basically putting a culture and there's different ways to do it i have three different ways to make kefir sodas and you just put you know your juice your water and your culture in and you just let it ferment that's all that it is it's fantastic it's fun it's easy and it's it's a great thing for spring and summertime especially and um you know it's it's interesting to me because the more i drank these fermented sodas that the more I didn't want unhealthy foods. That was something that I really noticed when I drank um, healthy sodas, was that I lost my desire for things that were unhealthy. And um, just replacing that in your diet, even if this is a good place for you to start. If you like sodas, this is a great place for you to start because it can help you um, to change your taste buds because your microbes control your taste. They, What you feed your microbes is going to make your microbes grow, and that's going to determine what you're going to crave and desire. And this is a great way to change them. I have lots of recipes. We have water kefir. Um, we have all kinds of probiotic sodas you can make with kefir whey. And it's, it's just really fun, guys. There's just different ways to do it. And um, it's not hard. It's super easy. And you can find it all in my books and on my website. And it's all there for you. It's, it's just uh, a click away. So these are the foods I love. These are kefir, kombucha, cultured vegetables, um, soaked and sprouted in grains, uh, legumes, soybeans, uh, tempa, miso, natto. Um, they're all delicious. They're all wonderful. You can even get all of these at the health food store and then probiotic sodas too. And there's so many different foods to enjoy and make a part of your life. And guys, you don't have to change your whole diet, although it kind of helps you do that along the way. You get healthier and healthier. But what's wonderful about these foods is they help your microbiome to be healthy. And when they're healthy, you're healthy. And um, I know that. I've seen that across the board with people. And when something's wrong with your body, you ought to check your gut first. And this is a delicious way to change your gut. And it's fun. And I make it easy because I don't do anything hard because it's too much work for me. I'm too busy. So check out my site. Uh, give me a holler if you need some help. We're here to help you. And I want to make this next cup coming up summer and spring a really fun time. I hope you'll make some of these foods. I hope you'll try just at least one of them. Just try one. You don't have to do them all because I didn't do them all either. Uh, but it can make such a difference in your life. So you guys have a wonderful week and go grab you a key for soda at the health food store or try to make one of your own go to my website and i'll help you make one and just see what happens just see how you like it find what flavor you like and uh let's get you healthy you guys have a great week